Good morning, everybody, from uh, cloudy Manchester. Just a reminder, if you have been missold a uh, pension by a uh, financial advisor, whether it's a final salary pension transfer, self-invested personal pension, SIP, or other things, check out Gemini Legal. The contact forms in the link below and in the comment section. All right, facing up towards Manchester Piccadilly train station. And uh, there's a, a restaurant here. Uh, we're not going to plug them, but check out how they describe their food. Fresh, fast, ugly, delicious. Okay, we're in the University of Manchester building on Sackville Street. And I guess this is a engineering, manufacturing part of the curriculum. Oh my, Nuclear Institute. Okay, we're gonna take the lift to floor C to find the Great Hall. Let's do it. Floor C. C for Charlie. We'll press the siren head button. Okay, everyone, we're in the Great Hall. What's the name of this building, madam? Sackville. Sackville building on Sackville Street. This is the Great Hall of the Great Building. As you can see, the adjudicator is patiently awaiting all the inmates to come here and do their exams. Relax, I'm not meant to be in this place. Let's turn the camera around. We are in the council chambers room. And check out how ornate it is. Sorry about the low light. I would turn all the lights on, but I'd probably get caught. I love the... You know what, what I notice? Pattern recognition. If any of you guys are into noticing patterns, you find that the posher the building, as in the more academic, intellectual, rich, um, powerful, capitalistic, the less they hark towards Christian imagery from the past and the more they go towards Hellenic and Roman, as in Greek and Roman. What are they trying to tell us? Is, uh, is Christianity a... Uh, a nice uh, operating system for those who follow, and then those who lead are still in the pantheon. I don't know. Answers on the postcard. Okay, I turn the lights on. I'll switch them off, save the environment and all that. But a uh, very nice room. And uh, that clock isn't far off. A stopped watch tells the correct time twice a day, and it's not very far off 10.55. Okay, one thing that Manchester is getting right, we're just off Canal Street just still in the very city center. One thing Manchester is doing right is building a lot of residential properties to bring in thousands and thousands of young, and maybe not so young like me, interesting people to live in the immediate city center to give it more of a metropolitan feel. I mean, having visited Leeds and Liverpool, there seems to be more people resident in the city center. So come on, Manchester, build more, build. Some facts, some facts. Do you like facts? These are real facts, honest facts. First fact is there is zero correlation between sexuality and intelligence. Second piece of information is there is zero evidence for any correlation between intelligence and morality. And uh, just check out this uh, bad design. First of all, look at the good Victorian canal design. And then we're next to the modern buildings that I was eulogizing a second ago. And we're like, yeah, okay, let's continue down Princess Street. Let's, uh, uh, um, I, uh, um, okay. The uh, designers uh, didn't really think this one through. God damn it. God damn it. Too old for this. Oh! Damn it, bloody hell. And we're out. Let's do a jump. Woo! I really dislike when they spell things incorrectly on purpose. And then I saw this uh, this chalking. People say, or when they bleat, when they screech, 
trust the science. I uh, wince because it's cringe. It is cringe to say trust the science because science is a method. Science is a message of method method of using reason and logic to uh, slowly remove variables to test a hypothesis. Uh, <laughs> fucking hell, test a hypothesis against the real world. Now, science is the method of science is unchanging, but the results of science, as we improve, as our logic and reason improves, is always changing. We don't believe in ether. We don't believe in ectoplasm. We don't believe in ghosts. But at one time, science was like, oh, science. Have you guys read the book, or at least seen the film with Jack Nicholson? One flew over the cuckoo's nest. Science was like, yeah. Stick a knife in the guy's brain, chop out his frontal lobes of his brain, and boom, he stops acting like a crazy person. Okay, he's in the corner drooling. Okay, he doesn't really move anymore, but we've cured his psychotic tendencies by only removing part of his brain. Science. Okay, so the Rolls Royce Coolinan, Coolinan. Rolls Royce. Mm -mm -mm. So, the starting price for this uh, vehicle is three hundred and six thousand British pounds. That's about half a million U.S. dollars. Um, every single Rolls Royce is custom built for the client. This guy's gone for a kind of carbon fiber, modern, stealthy kind of look at me. I'm a rapper kind of uh, thing. But as I approached it, I honestly swear to God, my first impression was Hackney Cab. London taxi. Do you see what I mean? See these these <laughs> these lights at the back. The shape of it. You can get five passengers in the back because it's a fucking hackney cab. <laughs> hey, um, behind me, there's a, a small protest. As you can see, there's a big white elephant in the square. The big white elephant is uh, the protesters saying that uh, they want to stop a railway project infrastructure called HS2. For those of you who don't know, HS2 is a fast rail service between northern cities and London. It would cut travel time between Manchester and London from two hours down to about one hour. We would have high-speed trains like Germany, France or Japan. But uh, they say that the argument is not good. That the British, um, the British countryside would suffer a lot. And they're here to uh, tell the public to stop HS2. Okay guys, welcome to Oldham Street, just off Piccadilly Gardens in the Northern Quarter. A person has been taken to hospital because he, uh, he got hit by a bus. And this is the bus that hit him. Oh look, there's a photographer on a little ladder. Can I cut? Not gonna put my fingerprints on it. Yeah, good safety glass. Save the driver's life. Okay everyone, it's Monday. Do you love Mondays? If you work in an office, maybe you don't. But uh, let me just cover them with my head. I'm not allowed to film certain people, but I can still f film the fluorescent tennis balls. Good morning, everybody. This is the Sunday sermon with me, Father Veach, Father Charlie. Today's prayers, today's sermon is dedicated to those who endure, those who are with the angry, those who are with the ill, those who are with the disabled, those who are with the abusers, those who are with the war. Those who are with the refugees, your endurance is sacred. You have no idea the meaning, the profundity behind your endurance. You never know. You might be holding the universe together. Without your endurance, without your strength, without your love and without your mercy, who knows what nightmare we'd be walking in right now. Blessed are the meek. The meek being a mistranslation from the original, from the Greek which was a mistranslation from the Aramaic. Blessed are the meek. Blessed are those who are slow to anger. Those who suffer the iniquities and the darkness of those who wish to get a reaction and they don't react. 
Blessed are those that do not unsheath their swords. There are those amongst us who are stuck in nihilism, stuck in negativity, stuck in hatred, stuck in anger, stuck in resentment, stuck in dreams or nightmares of retribution because you've been hoodwinked, you've been tricked, a sleight of hand of the mind, a sleight of the mind, shall we say, has tricked you. Here you are, look at ye, awaiting a miracle, awaiting a Morpheus, awaiting an Obi-Wan, awaiting a leader to reach down for you and pull you out of the gutter. When it was always you, you have to do this. A big trick has been pulled over your eyes here of you waiting for a miracle. The miracle is unfolding all around you. You think time is real in the way us humans log it? You think that's real? There's a miracle happening eternally. There's always been a miracle happening. The very fact that you are subjective is a miracle born of the paradox. So don't let those... <laughs> Don't let those people on TV, on the internet, on TikTok, on YouTube, including me. Everything. Pinch. Salt. Yokozuna. Over the shoulder. Over the right shoulder. If you can't see the miracle that is literally happening right now, then you've been hoodwinked. But it's not your fault. Maybe you can't help it. When you look at the past, two things important to realize talking about a few thousand years ago. We don't know how far back it goes. Every year new evidence comes out that man was already man, like modern man, Cro-Magnon man, 30,000 years ago, 50,000 years ago, a quarter of a million years ago, we were already modern. We don't know. But one thing is for sure, one thing's obvious, is that a few thousand years ago, there weren't that many people compared to today. You know, a city that today might have millions might have had 6,000 back then. Everyone could know each other. It was like a large university campus. I love that guy's uh, jogging pants, a bit of color on this otherwise gray day. And another thing to realize as well is that morality wasn't as all pervasive as it is today. We've had th literally thousands of years of civilization, hundreds of years of modern civilization. Who knows when modernity started? 1600, 1700, 1820, industrial revolution? We've had hundreds of years of communication, industry, healthcare, all sorts. So when I read, when I read the Hebrew Bible, the Tanakh, when I read the New Testament, when I read the Bhagavad Gita, when I read the writings of Guru Nanak in Sikhism, uh, in Punjabi, he says, Sabgo bindahe, there is nothing but God, all is God. I get it. So Thousands of years ago, it was important to write down morality. You saw how vicious it was. You just have to look at Genesis. Cain and Abel, one of the very first few stories in, in the, the Hebrew Bible. People killing their brothers out of spite, out of jealousy, for no reason. It's kind of like um, in the film Fight Club, when Edward Norton beats the shit out of Jared Leto. And then the other space monkeys are like, what the hell have you just... He goes, I just wanted to destroy something beautiful. We will have no peace, we will have no inner peace until we realize that all of reality, all of the universe, all of existence, whether objective or subjective, is one giant meaning, meaning engine, the engine of meaning. When you get philosophers talk about personal meaning, talk about maps of meaning, they're on the right track. There is nothing in life, there is nothing in the universe except the heartfelt communication between people trying to understand one another. 